Annie Lois Hatley, best known to friends and family as Ms. Lois, was born in 1913 in the small town of Malone, Alabama, to W.C. Wilkinson and Ophelia Camp. Ms. Lewis's early years were spent in a small house on a cotton field that her father tended and was the source of the family income. As a youngster, Ms. Lewis picked cotton with her brothers and sisters to help the family make ends meet. But times were hard. The effects of the Great Depression were felt across the United States, including the Deep South. Eventually, there came a point where W.C. no longer felt that he could adequately support his family in Malone. Cotton prices had fallen since the Depression of 29, and he felt that he could not continue to support his uh, family. So he had family living in Stanley County, North Carolina, and they had indicated that there was opportunity for people to come and work in the textile mills. And so one morning, W.C. and his family packed all their worldly belongings and a supply of bananas for the long journey into their Ford Model A and hit the road for Stanley County, North Carolina. The family settled into the small town of Albemarle, North Carolina, and soon W.C. and Ophelia were able to secure jobs. In addition, the two oldest girls, Ms. Lois and her sister Ruth, found work at the Wiscasset Cotton Mills. The jobs also provided a mill house for the family to live in, and life took a turn for the better. For Ms. Lois, her only regret at the time was that her new setting and responsibilities prevented her from finishing her high school education, a situation she wouldn't remedy for quite some time. Ms. Lois was an attractive young woman with a number of suitors. However, one stood out from the rest, James Price Hatley. Ms. Lois and Price were married in 1932. North Carolina required a uh, marriage certificate of three days, but you can, uh, could elope to South Carolina and arrive at nine o'clock and be married by 10.30 and you're man and wife and you're back on the road. So that's how everybody got married at that particular time. They had their first child, Bob, in 1934. Price was an energetic young man and was eager to provide his new family with a home. In 1936, he was able to secure two lots in West Albemarle on a cornfield. For the princely sum of $1,100, he was able to build what would become the family home. It was a very small and basic house, consisting of two bedrooms and one bath, but it helped cement the family's roots and bring them one step closer to the American dream. Their second son, Bill, was born in 1939. It was during this time that the Second World War was beginning to heat up in Europe and because of rising tensions, many American men were selected for a physical evaluation to determine their candidacy for the armed forces. Price was among the scores of men eager to defend our nation, but due to his flat feet and several other deficiencies, he was deemed unfit for military service. As the years passed, the Hatley family continued to expand. Their third son, Jerry, was born in 1942. The end of the war created an economic surge felt throughout the United States and brought about an opportunity for Price to obtain a job in the full fashion hosiery mill. During this time, Ms. Lois worked as a homemaker and continued to build and support her family. The education of her children always ranked high on Ms. Lois's list of priorities as she felt that education was a key aspect to a successful life. Like many parents, she insisted her children have opportunities she had not. Accordingly, all three of her children graduated from high school and two ended up with college degrees. In 1957, Price felt that his family needed a better form of transportation. So with Miss Lois's encouragement, he purchased a new car that was the pride of the family and symbolic of the progress the Hatleys had made over the course of the years. Appropriately, the Hatley family became very keen on road trips. In fact, Miss Lois was the driving force behind much of the family's activities. Every summer, the family would drive from Stanley County to Myrtle Beach. Family time on Sunday afternoons was very important to Miss Lois, and weather permitting, the family would gather on their front lawn and lounge in the afternoon. 
Her Christian faith was very important to Miss Lois. She used her Christian beliefs as a set of guidelines for living a happy and healthy life, and she led her family by example in regards to faith. For instance, she was insistent on weekly church attendance at Poplins Grove Baptist Church. She also conducted a daily Bible study with her friends and family. Her religious devotion meshed well with her love of surrounding herself with friends and family, and in fact, she used her faith to enlighten the lives of those around her. In 1982, Ms. Lois and Price celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary at Poplins Grove Church. They even invited President Ronald Reagan to their anniversary. And though he declined, they did receive a letter of congratulations from the president. For their 50th anniversary, Ms. Lois and Price renewed their vows at Poplins Grove Baptist Church. Since their original wedding was in a courthouse, this time Ms. Lois was very adamant about a church wedding. Later in her life, Miss Lois was inspired by gardening. In particular, she was fascinated with the different ways to grow tomatoes. Initially, she grew them in the traditional fashion, in the ground, but one day she read about a different method in which they're grown in a bale of hay. It was this method that Miss Lois would adopt as her preferred method of growing, and as a result, the Hatley family enjoyed a bountiful harvest of fresh tomatoes each summer. With her golden years fast approaching, Miss Lois got the idea that something had to be done about the remembrance of her life. For Miss Lois, the first step in this process was continuing her education. She went to Stanley Technical College, where she received her GED in 1972. While at Stanley College, one of her instructors encouraged her to write a book, and Miss Lois took this advice to heart and produced a collection of short stories from the different parts of her life that ended up being 129 pages long. Her book, Annie's adventures was met with success. Sadly, Miss Lois lost Price when he was 81 years old. However, she was bound and determined to live her life in a very positive way. The passing of her husband only brought Miss Lois closer to her family, and she liked to spend the holidays with her children and grandchildren. She also loved to send and receive Christmas cards, of which she assembled a sizable collection over the years. Miss Lois, I think, had adversities, but yet on the same token, she had a happy life, a very happy life. And she always looked at sunrises as the most positive thing in her life when the sun would rise in the east, not the sunsets of the west. <laughs>